Hey, what's going on guys? Hope you've all been well. Today we're gonna talk about one of the most complicated but awesome subjects in all of computing, and that's virtual memory. So virtual memory is a crazy topic and we can't really get into its real guts in one video, but what I wanna do and what we should all do is really appreciate it. It's always working under the hood for you and the whole point of this video is to give it some much needed love. All right, let's do it. So all of us have a ton of digital devices. We have phones, computers, tablets, and each one of these things is running a lot of programs all the time. Remember, these programs are called processes. And just for a reminder, if you watch this old video of mine, how code works, it's a good refresher of what a process is. Okay, so the big question that we should ask ourselves is, how do these hundreds of programs that are running on my phone not bump into each other at random points in time? Remember, your computer is a system and it has limited resources. So maybe it has eight gigs of RAM, it has one processor and two terabytes of hard disk space. How do all these programs share these resources and not just bump into each other while they're running? If you're working on a brand new mobile game that you want to release where you can like beat alligators, you don't have to worry about what other programs are running on the phone while your game is running. Do you think the creator of Flappy Bird had to care about how his code worked alongside Facebook application code? I'm sure you already know the answer to this question, but it's a big fat no. As programmers, when we're developing our applications, we really don't care about what else is running on the system, right? We just write our own applications and everything is good to go. As long as we don't have bugs, right? There's pretty much like infinity combinations and variations of what could be happening on any system, computer or phone at any given time. And it would be ridiculous almost for a programmer to have to worry about that. All right, so the main question that we should ask ourselves is who's exactly preventing these programs from bumping into each other? Whose job is that? Whose responsibility is that? Well, I'm sure you guys have a basic intuition of who's doing that, and it's the operating system. The operating system does many, many things, but one of the most important things it does is manage all the application memory of all the processes that are running. The operating system is doing a lot, a lot of work behind the scenes to make our lives a lot easier. And even if we just accept it and we don't really know how it works, we have to have a really deep appreciation for it. Now we're gonna start talking about virtual memory. The operating system provides this big blueprint of memory for every single process. And what's really cool is that this blueprint is exactly the same for every single process. Let's just take an example that it's a blueprint for a house, okay? So the operating system for every single process out there is gonna give them a blueprint of a house to use its memory. The operating system can just be like, okay, Flappy Bird, you can store your data in the garage and it's at address 5,000. Now when Facebook comes along, the operating system tells it the same thing. Okay, Facebook, you can store your data also in the garage at address 5,000. This blueprint that the operating system gives for every single process, you have to store your data at address 5000 in the garage. It's the same for every single process. No one is treated any differently. Every single program sees the same blueprint of memory that the operating system provides. But wait a minute, that would mess things up, right? If the OS told everything to put its data at address 5000, wouldn't they all collide with each other? Okay, so if a light bulb just went off in your head, and maybe it did, this is exactly what virtual memory is. The address 5000 is a virtual address that the operating system provides to every single one of these different processes. And that virtual address actually maps to different physical addresses in the real system. So even though Flappy Bird and Facebook both use address 5000 to store their data, that 5000 actually points to a different part of memory real physical memory and the operating system manages that. Virtual address 5000 for Flappy Bird could point to a real address of 20,000 while a virtual address of 5000 for Facebook could point to address 30,000. It's virtual. 
it's the operating system's job to make sure that these virtual addresses never really collide in the physical space and it does a really, really good job with that. So this is kind of like the beauty behind virtual addresses. The operating system gives the same exact blueprint of the house to every single process in the system. When you develop your programs, you don't really care where the memory goes, right? You just use it, allocate it, but you really don't know where it's actually being allocated. That's the operating system's job. All we can do as just the average regular day application developer is we just try to use the system, not use too many resources, and the operating system will make sure our programs don't collide with all the other programs that are running at the same time. Another really cool to think about is imagine if many processes shared the same pieces of code. Say Facebook and Flappy Bird shared the same piece of software. Do you think the operating system would duplicate that same piece of code between Facebook and Flappy Bird? Or would it duplicate the code between 100 different processes if it was shared? While the operating system is also really smart, it can recognize which pieces of code are shared and it can map those virtual addresses to actually the same place in real memory. Or when it knows that things can't collide, it'll map the virtual addresses to different places. It's just like really, it's almost like crazy smart and it's just happening for you for free almost. All right guys, so that's just a really, really high level intuition behind virtual memory. And hopefully we all have a deep appreciation of what it's doing for us. Remember the operating system is doing a lot of stuff for us besides memory management. Memory management is just one out of many important things that's happening behind the scenes. Another really cool little side thing is that virtual memory actually takes the coordination of hardware and software together. It's not purely a software thing. Hardware and software work together to make virtual memory work, but that discussion is kind of outside the scope of this video. I'm gonna wrap it up about now. All right guys, hope this was fun. Hope you gained a better intuition and give some love to virtual memory, which is kind of one of those things that it's always working for us, but many people just don't understand it because we don't have to worry about it. So as long as we understand it a little bit, appreciate it a little bit, and if you wanna go the extra mile and really dig deep to understand it, you'll find that it's one of the craziest, most complicated, but cool topics like ever. All right guys, so that's the end of the video. Hope you liked it and just enjoyed some of these cool tricks of computing, and I'll see you guys next time, all right? Leave me a comment. If anything, drop me a like and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, okay? See you next week.